I've never been more famous than I am now. Okay. That blew me up. Okay. Well, yeah. People from country. People sure. from countries I have cannot pronounce was calling my actual self. Yeah, I believe. I mean, I, always, I have more streaming now than I've ever had. Trust me. So when you they say like me. negativity sells or whatever it is, it does. <laughs> I was like, guys, I'm not even famous enough to be canceled. No, no canceled. bro, canceled. no cap. Canceled. No facts. Canceled. Facts. The whole world heard me say that. Caps, like it's like I feel like in. in I was like, cancel you, lie, bro. I, this, I sing so. I sing so. I play the piano. Mm. Like who cancels a piano player? Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you suffer from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. Loving one. basketball. Loving basketball. Fire, though. Corny, juicy. That's corny? Co it's cozy. I don't think that's oh, it's corny. Not, well, he got on the shirt, so y'all understand me a little bit then. Oh, maybe he's just corny. Maybe he do. Sorry, I'm joking. Corny's good. <laughs> Corny's good, right? You said I'm a lover? I'm a lover. So. Is, yeah. is Corny good? Okay, a lover. Maybe that's the word. Oh, my corny's great. I'm the corniest person I know. What's Corny. Saying hello to people, introducing yourself. Oh, okay, well, cool. I'm corny as hell. <laughs> Ultimately, I'm the ultimate yep. cornball. Yep. I guess that's corny. Like, yeah, so, coming to your family barbecue with like something or like hot dogs. If you brought hot dogs to your family barbecue, corny. You know what's crazy though? Mm -hmm. Even like, I just feel like what well, that brought something to my attention. I feel like some things be just ignorance though, and not in a bad way. Ignorance is just the lack of knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. Like bringing something. Something that's that small, like if you, d depending on where you come from, mm -hmm. you might not know better. Right. It's just somebody to teach you, but you got to right. be acceptable. So I would say maybe being ac acceptable to learn. Yeah. Teachable. Maybe that's corny. A corny. teachable spirit. Maybe that's corny then. Teachable. Also, maybe it's just called humble, right? Yeah. I don't want to be humble. humble. You want to be humble? You got to read the book Humble. You would love it. It's ridiculous. Who is it by? I can't tell you the name. You oh, don't know the name. Yeah, oh, okay, 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 okay. But yeah, as soon as you go to look for it, it's going to be the only book humble. It's okay. so good. What is it like? It's about the evolution of self-esteem in America, right? And mm. and what the thought process was in bringing that word to the states. Like, like let's start empowering people to feel better about themselves. This happened mm. in the 70s, 80s. And all of a sudden, humility went out the window. And so then we moved into this soft life culture that we have now. Where people say, I don't want to work. You know, so it's like moving from I got a high self-esteem to I'm too special to do this to I don't want to do anything. Wow. I, it's crazy. I say I, did, I, I don't know how I feel about humble because I feel like the humble person never win. You're humble. You just You just gave us a long spiel about all, everything that you do every day and you still know who you are. Humility is the ability to know who you are no matter what people think about you. No, for sure. Yeah. 100% that's me. Like, yeah. I don't care about none of these people. Yeah. Why, well, Okay, but they support me for sure. Mm -hmm. But the people that got to say, yeah, and you still know who you are. Yeah, I you got don't you. have to retaliate. You don't got to explain to them or defend yourself. It's okay. But that comes with time, though. Yeah, it comes with time. Like, and that's why that's why I had to hold off on the conversation, right? I mm -hmm. asked you, like, what brought you here? Well, what are we? What is this? This is bamboo. Okay, teach this, me. This is actually it's like a little bit of cinnamon in it. Okay. Um, it smells like good. Uh, vanilla. Abstract, I guess. Um, she got me over here talking about like. Let's see if it fall. Let's see how it falls down the side. Yeah, okay. let's. I, it's it's it's. Okay. It's definitely cinnamon, okay. some vanilla, like some oak maybe. Taste it. Cheers, cheers. Cheers, for real. Oh, it's very nice. You probably would know better than me. What would you say? What you taste? This will go great in a cup of um, hot tea. Mmm. Really? Mm, so yeah. the white one, right? Red Rubois tea, yep. The white one, I think they have a mix with like coffee. Okay, yeah. You, you drink coffee? I do. You can have one if you want. Wow. 
Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's cool, man. You can, you can have Appreciate one. That. You can have a couple of them. Golly. Yeah, 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 yeah. You like it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um. So, your question was? I was asking, like, what made you, because I see you doing a couple of interviews. I'm like, mm-hmm. what, like, why are you on this run? Yeah. I just, I just feel like I have something to say, and I think we all feel that way at some point, but we don't know mm-hmm. um, how loud we should say it, how many people we should say it to. Mm-hmm. Um, but sometimes you've been given a platform. You know what I'm saying? And if you experience rejection or failure or embarrassment or shame in front of a lot of people, you kind of wonder, is it okay to speak? Mm. You know, so um, I told myself after some time, yes, it's okay for you to speak. Mm. And the people who, who hear you align and the people who don't, don't align, and that's okay. And that's okay. Yeah. And I, so that's the first thing you said, right, mm-hmm. when I asked you, we before the cameras came on, and I specifically said, hold up, let's mm-hmm. wait, because... I've been learning that that takes time though, Mm -hmm. right? So like it's easy because you have the time and sometimes I feel like we have this, what what we call it, um, hindsight bias, right? Mm -hmm. So you can look back and say, this is why and this happens for a reason because it already happened. Mm -hmm. But when you're going through something, it's hard to understand that my voice matters. I should speak about this. My Me being transparent is important. And as I was just talking, like just behind um, behind the cameras, that's something that I'm just dealing with, understanding the person I'm talking to, mm-hmm. because some people are going through that, and they don't want to be transparent. And as much as I, as much as I know how it can help people, if story matters, they might just not be ready, and they don't understand it. Yet. And you have to get, it, you have to have have some experience and go through something to come out of it and say, Nah, I do have something to say. Yeah. How 100%. long did it take you to really understand that? You know what, if I'm honest, I practiced in front of God first. Mm. Like, you ever hear people be like, I practiced my speeches in the bathroom since Mm. I was six years old. Like, I really practiced in front of God first. Mm. And, like, when I felt like he thought it was good, then I was able to come out. So uh, that particular practice time took me about two years. Mm. Like, after massive rejection, that, that part where I said, okay, let me not worry about what people think for a second, and let me just go into a secret space alone. It was about two years where I just practiced my voice. Yeah. So how do you understand when is your voice coming from the spirit, right? Mm-hmm. Because I think, like, even just doing my research, you spoke about, let's say specifically the uh, the Trump thing, right? You mm-hmm. spoke on that multiple times. You mm-hmm. spoke on it when you was going through it, mm-hmm. right? Or was that, did you wait some time to even respond to that? Because it seemed like you were speaking on, like, when it was going on, you was, you I was love, defending yourself. I, wait, I love that question, okay? How do you know when it's coming from the spirit? Right. Because you spoke multiple times. Mm. Break it down. Talk to me. Just because I spoke multiple times don't mean it came from the spirit. Right. Right. Sometimes, mm-hmm. sometimes you get hit brutally, and if you don't take a minute to realign, recalibrate. I love boxing. I'm thinking about. Oh. I like boxing. <laughs> I'm to thinking me, about like yeah. you know somebody get hit. They always go. Doo, 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 yeah, doo. you got it. Yeah. Right, you gotta wait until you standing you up straight. Up. You might have to hold them for a second, get your breath. Yeah. Hold you. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta hold on to your obstacle for a second. Look at you preaching. That's a fact. So that you can get back up. Sometimes your obstacle puts you back into position. Mm. Right. So it took me a minute to recalibrate, and I started speaking immediately after I got the blow. Mm. Like. The next day, I'm on so CNN. Still dizzy, Connor. You don't know. I'm dizzy as hell. <laughs> We're talking boxing I'm, terms. Yo, I'm dizzy as hell. Okay. To the point where now, if I ever look back on some of those interviews, I'd be like, I don't even look like myself. Uh, so, so that, so my point is, is that wasn't coming from the spirit. That was coming from uh, that moment in the boxing ring where okay. you're holding on to your obstacle. All right, so yeah. let me push back a little bit because mm-hmm. I have heard. Mm-hmm. Kind of, I don't want to say both, but I've heard, heard multiple responses from you, right? Mm-hmm. And I heard two different responses. I'm listening. And how can I? I can. Some things you were saying immediately, mm-hmm. I understood. Mm-hmm. I guess one one of the arguments was um, I wanted because you you and uh, Travis Green, Green. Uh-huh. Travis Green, right? Yeah. Pastor, preacher. He is a pastor, right? Pastor. Yeah. He, you guys did a, a gospel song. Uh, what was the name? It was one word. Um, give it to me. Uh, it was. Uh, What's the name of that? Song? What was the name of the song? It probably. He's intentional. In, intentional. Yep. Yeah. So uh, I know it was one word. So, so like y'all did intentional, mm-hmm. and I guess your response was, bro, like I'm trying to get our voices in front of the masses, right? Like to I guess the um to show the world. 
whatever the the response was, it was like, yo, I want to get out of voice in front of the world. Right. And Talk I want to me. So is that what it sounded like I was saying to I me? Want, I want to be more famous. No, because I want to get my voice in front of the world. Well, not even the 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 message the across. Message. Yeah, the message, right? Okay. Like, uh, just you um, singing a gospel song, right? Mm-hmm. I, I guess you could have chose any song. Mm-hmm. You chose that. You was intentional about the song, mm-hmm. right? It was gospel. You wanted to sing this in front of people, right? And even the song, listen to the song. It sounds like, yo, no matter what's the message in my mind, mm-hmm. and maybe I'm just corny. It's mm-hmm. just what it is, but I, maybe I'm a little more understanding in the world. Mm-hmm. The message in my mind was, yo, no matter what's what obstacle or who's in front of our face. We're always going to be okay, mm-hmm. right? He's intentional about every single thing that's going on. 100%. So when I heard you responding, I'm like, I think it's cool. Mm-hmm. So then I do more research and I hear a different response. Like basically, I don't want to say recanting, but like going back, like, eh, it probably wasn't. Maybe it was a mistake. Thing oh, like it that. was a mistake. Wait a minute. Just because you have good intentions don't mean it's not a mistake. Well, I, I don't. That's why I'm pushing back. Yeah, so Tell me just, why was a mistake. just because you got good intentions don't mean it wasn't. My mother always says, Chrissy, you have to have more than good intentions. Fact. That, mm. that was the epitome of that lesson. What they say, the the, pa- the, the, pathway, the, the pathway pa- to hell was paved in good, good intentions. intentions. Mm. My pathway to hell was paved in good intentions. Tell I me why was a mistake. To, I oh. went to, because I had to go to hell. You know something is a mistake when you went hell. Whether or not you still living is where you find gratitude. I was living in hell for a minute, so 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 it made me have to have to say, in the future, mm-hmm. when I want people to feel better, how will I go about it? And in the future, when I want people to feel better, I'll stand on the stage that brings them peace. I don't. I, I, you can't always send a positive message from a broken place, and that's what I did. Now. Travis Green, his whole entire uh, career or his whole entire offering is about standing in broken places. Mm. My whole entire offering is about standing in Bentleys, standing in in, in healed places. <laughs> yes, because hip hop no says we came from the bottom, now we're here. Mm-hmm. Gospel says we're at the bottom. How do we? Where do we go from here? Right. So. When you sing a gospel song and you're a gospel artist, everything you do, you do in the broken places. But you wasn't technically looked at as a gospel artist, mm-mm. so it kind of looked like How, clout chasing. It looked like it looked it looked maybe you could call it that. It it looked like what the hell is she doing? Like how is she representing us? Because I I represented at the time a different audience than Travis Green. Now let me say this: the heart of me is a Christian. The heart of me is faith-based. The heart of me loves the Lord. But I had never displayed that affection for God before. And so that was the first time I realized, oh my God, my audience don't know who I am at all. Right. So it's a catch-22. It's like, it's like, okay, let me be more intentional about how I present myself in the future mm. so that when I move in the heart space, people will know that it's from my heart. So how can you say that's a mistake then? It was a learning lesson for sure, but... It was a learning lesson. Mistake? Mm, I just... I don't like that. that it's your story. It's not I nothing to do with No, I feel you. It's I feel like, you. And you, I, you needed that problem. Yeah, and, and people... And everybody has their different ways. The Bible says um, in one part, it says it was good that I was afflicted. Mm. Like, and the point of that was, like, this affliction introduced me to a part of myself that I didn't even know. Mm. I thought I had peace before I went through this. But after I went through this, I said, oh, my God. You had to really go find that mom. <laughs> well, no, I have it. Mm. And I didn't know that if I was just, if I just stopped retaliating, recalibrating, re-trying to get myself back up in that boxing match, I didn't know that as soon as I just walked away from the scene that I was okay. Mm. Like, I'm okay. I'm okay. And one of the songs that I sing now a lot on stage is a song I have called I'm Okay because it just talks about, like, Sometimes it takes a minute for you to realize it, but who you really are is always who you really are. And sometimes you gotta just shed yourself from what you're not so that you mm. can figure out who you really are. And mm. that's what that did for me. It just showed me, you know what? I'm really not that bad. I just effed that up real bad. I did. I did. Mm. What Jay-Z say, it was one of, one of his songs, he said, uh, the end of the verse was basically like, you was who you was before you got here. I forgot mm-hmm. the song, but mm-hmm. basically he said, you, you know the song I'm talking about? What was, what, what was it? You remember? I don't remember the name. I know the song 
Help me out, man, if you remember, man. Uh, I just was looking at the song. You can Google it. Somebody, you know, you should know. You should. I should know, right? <laughs> remember the first <laughs> time know. I had to do a, a concert with Jay-Z, my cousins was like, yo, go to Barnes & Nobles, because back when CDs was out. Yeah. And go pick up Reasonable Doubt and learn every single oh, hook. Now you got me. No, we got to find this out. Uh, Jay-Z. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Public Service and What was the bar? Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, public service announcement. Uh, I'm, we gotta get this now. Like, we gotta get this. It's, 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 it's too, all right, so what do you say? No matter where you go, you are what you are, player. You can't try to change that. That's at the top yeah, of the there we go. Mm -hmm. No matter where you go, you are what you are, player. No matter, it's like, you, could, you, 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 could, you could try to change it, but the fact remains, like, you were who you were before yeah. you got here, right? Yeah. That's basically what it says, right? Yeah. And. Perfect example, right? Like you said, like, bro, I was already. Cool. I already, I was, I already, I already had the whole piece. Like people have always said, "Yo, Chris, you got so much peace," but it took rejection on a mass level for people to be like, "Yo, she's really as peaceful, peaceful as she been acting like." Mm -hmm. Like that's not an act. Like mm -hmm. once all of those interviews was over, I opened up a yoga studio. Like we, I wasn't gonna dwell in that negativity. Mm -hmm. That's just not who I am. And so I didn't have anything to prove. I didn't feel the need to come out with another song. I had, I think, 32 cities that I had to complete because they were already contracted. We finished those. And we went to work, like, laying down hardwood floors for the yoga studio. So it's just like, you know, life will, you'll go through all of these hurdles, but it always keeps recalibrating. Like, mm -hmm. you always keep recalibrating. Man, I think, I don't know, just watching it back. First of all, it's so much, it's, the conversation is so much deeper than like just what's on the surface, right? Sure. Like, I think you had one conversation about uh, the difference of um, how the the public reacted to you compared to how they reacted to men, right? That was one conversation. I thought that was a great conversation about mm -hmm. how how they reacted to the men that worked with Trump compared to you as a woman that worked with Trump. Right? Okay, so that's other people's narrative. That was cool. That was a pretty cool but conversation. But I just want you to know that's not my thought. No, I know. I know. No, no. Okay. That was a conversation. Yeah. I thought that was a cool take on it. How people react to Men secular versus, artists versus mm. how people react to people who they think are religious. That's, that's my one. joint. Like, how you going to tell me if I'm spiritual or not? Yeah. That part takes me out. I just feel like, man, I don't know. Maybe I'm just like, maybe I'm too hum humble or corny or whatever because I just don't. I just feel like, bro, if you if you ain't see that part of me, I'm multifaceted. That's like, very good. So if you ain't see that part of me, that's on you. That's on you. You know what I'm saying? And, like, bro, I, I know what's up with me. I wish somebody would have told me that. I had a team around me that felt like, Chris and Michelle has contributed to the community and done all of this social work and this, that, and the third, and y'all still acting like... And they felt this need to say, Defended I'm enough. Like that. And I was just like, bro. That's I like had people commenting back on it on social media, like going into my account, like we gotta fix this. And it's like, sometimes you can't fix stuff. That's you gotta let things pass. That's like the racist saying, I got mm -hmm. a black friend. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, bro. Yeah. She's, I'm good enough. No. It's like, bro, like, bro, if you think, oh my God, this conversation, damn, like this is so deeper than I thought, right? And, but that does matter about the people around you, right? Like I have a mm -hmm. fiance, right? Mm -hmm. And Congratulations, by Thank way. you. And one thing my girl teaches me, right, is like when she brings something, a problem to me, like it's a it's about that specific problem. Mm -hmm. It's not about everything else. So when she bring an issue to me, right, and I say, but I just did this, 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 and this, is invalidating her feelings, right? Mm -hmm. So I can see how, yo, we're bringing to you this issue, mm -hmm. and you're saying how you're doing this and this for the community, and that, like that don't nobody got to cares do what we're about, about that right now. Right now, you hurt somebody. Mm. I like to keep it right there. Mm. Like keep it on the on the issue. You hurt somebody. Mm. Now it may be misunderstood, it may be taken out of context, whatever, but it hurt. And let's address that. That's it. Let's address that. So when I say a mistake, my whole thing is like, did I hurt you? Mm. you I'm you sorry. The room card, I guess. I apologize. Because mm. why not? Like if you hurt somebody, like if and you love them, then then it's okay to kind of like just be at the very least like be empathetic with for sure and how at the end of the day though like what really really took me out was and i'm writing a book it's called uh naked abundance i came into this industry off the jump 
a million dollars. Like, off, they just signed me for writing. They signed mm. me for music. Like, just as a kid out of college. And I'm riding in these fancy cars, and I'm going to all of these places. I'm traveling around the world. And number one album on the Billboard pop charts, a Grammy, like, off your first mm. offerings. And so I never faced any type of um, backlash, failure, embarrassment, shame, none of that. And we move into that era, mm. and I was stripped of every single thing, including my marriage, which mm. was of two years at the time. And what was crazy to me was that when everything was gone, and when everything was, I was finally in that closet alone, you know, just in my journal, I looked at myself, my naked self, and I could only see beauty. Mm. Like I could only see the peace that I had been practicing for so many years. I could only see the Holy Spirit that lived on the inside of me because that's all that was left. And in that, in that space and in that place, I felt so capable of being purposeful, of being impactful. Now it was just a matter of being creative again. Mm. And so that, that term naked abundance for me became so real when when I got stripped and realized I was still enough. Yo, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy, David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created The Morning Meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now, listen, as an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and we ain't in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now... You got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I'll see you there. Mm. So how do we be empathetic, right? Mm -hmm. But still own a piece of ourselves. And what I mean by that is, okay, I hurt your feelings, mm -hmm. right? But this was something that I wanted to do and I needed to do mm -hmm. for my people, right? This mm -hmm. is my perspective, right? How, how can the two coexist or can it? They don't have to coexist. People mm. don't have to forgive me. Right. Right. That's called radical acceptance. Mm -hmm. This idea that something happened, I can't change it, and it feels like this. But it looks like not this. them, though. Not to cut you off. Forget them. How can it coexist within us, within you, within your, yourself? Oh, how can I reconcile that I did something that was that was not perfect? How can I stand on what I stand on, right? But mm -hmm. still be empathetic of if it hurts your feelings. But did, I meant what I, I what I did was from the heart. It was oh, from the genuine. Oh, if place. it hurts your feelings, is a, a, a fairly short season. Mm. Right. When your mom burnt your finger by mistake while she was trying to pass you the cornbread. Right. She said, I'm sorry, baby. At dinner time, mm. You're not still thinking about that at Thanksgiving when she passes you the cornbread. You're taking the cornbread. Um, you know, you, you, I'm not I'm never going to harbor over what happened in the past. Mm. As a matter of fact, my DM is filled with, man, I'm sorry I treated you that way. What I look like being like, well, F you. It's a, no, I am still purposeful, peaceful, and impactful. Mm. And if you align with that, I have everything to give you still. Mm. So this, the reconciliation happened after the apology, and that was it. Okay. I'm ready for Thanksgiving. Okay. I ask that because... Mm -hmm. um, I ask that because... When you say it's like come off so apologetic, but mm. almost of like, like when you say it's a mistake, that's what got me. Honestly, I'm gonna keep it. It's not okay, getting so not when me. I talk to when you men, say a mistake, men it's like, always say this. Like I ain't like that. What, bro? I don't really, man. Yeah, I don't really. Okay, so okay, so give me your advice because because I'm female. Remember, I have a softness, mm. and that softness means that I'm going to nurture you. And if you seem wounded, I just I light up immediately. How can mm. I help? How can I fix it? It doesn't mean that I'm broken. It means that I'm empathetic, right? Okay. So empathetic is the right word. For sure. But a lot of times people mistake empathy for brokenness. I'm okay. not. I'm not. And, and I get that a lot too. Okay. So I feel you. Yeah. You so you sensing that? Damn, she's over here broken over this ish. No, I 
I'm very comfortable still getting to bags. I still tour two days out of the week. I'm still mm. on the road. Um, I still buy nice things. Um, I still celebrate people in my family. I'm having a, a wonderful time. But I, I hear you. Because mm. people do people do ask me that often, like, when are you going to heal from all of this? It's like, who said I wasn't healed? Right. So what posture, what posture do you feel like um, looks like I'm okay? What does that look like? Uh, I don't know. I can't even give advice. Cause Should I be like, fuck these niggas? That's me. But no. You, you See? Don't you, even look right. I would say that. But Man, fuck it. Right? Don't that, even. That would be me for sure. Man, you but niggas dude, even I know can't what. even pull that off. <laughs> that's, me, that's me. Man, y'all niggas don't even know. First of all, talk about hindsight bias. Mm-hmm. We're going to get back into the good conversation, but let's be a little ignorant. Mm-hmm. Fuck that. Bro, people are wishing that Trump was the president now. I'm going to bed. I'm like, no kid. Like, Where's my back? You know what? Everybody has shot. something to say. And as soon as the man leaves, they wishing he was back. Because they didn't understand what was going on. First of all, he said a lot of fucked up shit. Like, we know that. Like, we, we can... Seriously. So you know people that wish Trump was back in office right now. What? Niggas, is, the bag is different for a lot of people now. Especially mm-hmm. after COVID, right? Mm-hmm. People are saying different things. And so their perspective is different. Like, damn, I hear people say, like, man, Trump was better than, you know the argument? Hmm. At least Trump told us the truth. At least he told us he wasn't hiding it. What's, what, I guess that's a perspective. Like, he, he he told us, if he ain't like us, he told us right then and there. You got people who, who hide it, and, and, and at least I know he's my enemy, right? Like, something like at that. At least what? I know he's my Wow. People say, Wait, I know y'all hear the arguments. I ain't the only one. Come on. No, I'm really listening. So you ain't hear these conversations you probably can't say that you heard no, these conversations I right? was all right I ain't crazy this, at I'm least, not making this up like facts people say like at least he's going to tell me he don't like me in my face right he's not going to hide it and like hide his hand or something like that people I, okay I, I no I, I, I can understand that but I, I okay let me say this let me say this because this is not normal um I preserve positivity Sure. Like, and as soon as a, a conversation is moving in the direction that seems like it doesn't make much sense, mm. at this particular juncture in my life, I don't have space. That's cocky. Congratulations. No, it's, it's not know, cocky. I don't mean to be rude, but I just, like, when stuff don't make no, I just be like, because the truth is, is that we live in a warped system. What you mean by that? So we live in a world system. We live in a government that was created to keep us behaving. For sure. So to speak. Yeah. Right? Especially in the United States. The kingdom system does not function in that space. The kingdom system functions on you're already enough. You have everything it takes to be purposeful, impactful. You, you, there's a tribe that I've called you to. Like there's so much purpose in the kingdom system space. And we out here trying to make sense out of this crazy ass world. This world does not make sense. <clears throat> so I'll tell you, go back to your question, right? We went ignorant a little bit. Go back to your question. Again, there's no advice, but my perspective would be, yo, it's like a relationship, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. So it's things that I'm going to do that's going to hurt my woman. I'm it's listening. In, 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 inevitable, right? Mm-hmm. I know who I am at the core. I love me. Right? Mm-hmm. I love the Lord, right? And I know the path that I'm going to be a, a better me, right? Yeah. But going through that path, I'm gonna hurt some people's feelings. And I can apologize, I can acknowledge your hurt, and I can be empathetic, and I can be respectful, I can be all of that, but it's on you to forgive. I can't do that. Right. I have to forgive myself, right? The moment I forgive myself, and I respect you, and I'm empathetic to you, right? If you don't decide to, to forgive me, that ain't on me. You gotta get right okay, with the Lord now. Okay, 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 okay. So, okay. so <coughs> the question here is, has Chrisette forgiven herself for the foolishness that happened? Mm, I guess, I mean, I, but I'm not coming from it for you forgiving me. No, 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 because you, you, you just spoke to me. I don't think I have. Sheesh, why not? Because how did I miss that? Miss? How did I miss <sighs> that it was gonna hurt people? Okay. Okay. How did I okay. miss that? Okay. This is we won't go down the list of all of the reasons why this is a bad choice for a president. Like because yeah, it's the world know. system, it functions in the way it functions. We don't need to list that. Mm-hmm. But how did I miss that it was going to break so many people? I mean, Spike Lee had to hit me up. Quest Love had to hit me up. Like people really, yo, Chris, you crazy? Wait, this this Spike hit you up though because listen, oh, on I, Twitter. 
Did he hit you up before? Because I think he took away, like, took you out of, of a movie or something like that? I wasn't in the movie. Yeah, song or something. He was, he was going through a lot. Right? This is me being... This Empathetic. Effort, this, yeah. yeah. He was dealing with a lot of stuff. We, we, we had a crazy president on our hands. <laughs> Man. So, you know, a part of me, I love, I love what you said. So maybe I need to forgive myself. Yeah. For, you know what? That's good. Because I'm not, I'm just not being super... Bro, how dare you guys? It's a good rebuke. It's a good rebuke, it's just, Jay. Like, it's just I like how dare you guys Take a shot. Like how dare you guys throw daggers at me? Mm -hmm. And look at how you responded. Like are, so I'm a guard friend man by mm -hmm. far. Like I, but I'm still flawed. I'm a human. Mm -hmm. A man that knows anything knows he knows nothing at all, right? Like mm -hmm. I, bro, I I go to church Saturdays. You know what I'm saying I don't go to every Saturday, but I'm in church. You know what I'm saying like, mm -hmm. bro. First of all, y'all got a nerve. People got so people are so quick to judge somebody when they got so many skeletons in, the, in their own closet. Mm -hmm. Like who the f excuse my language, but who the fuck are you to, to judge me when you got so much shit going on? I never and, thought about it. And like the that. fact that people was just like throwing stones, right? Who really came to you and said, "Yo, listen, let me hear you out," right? Before you start going online to look cool because that was a good thing to do. That, that was a cool right, thing to I, do. Right. I was always curious why my celebrity friends so that's didn't, corny. Te didn't text me. That's the definition of oh, corny. Where, where you from originally? New York. New York. What part? Long Island. Long Island, right? Mm -hmm. So you from New York. You understand. I'm from Baltimore. Scratch religion. Let's put that to the side, right? Mm -hmm. If you're really from the streets or wherever, right? Mm -hmm. That's just stand up, bro. Like that's you go standard. to the internet to, to talk about me, bro. You got my number. What are you talking about? That this was is for very anybody. Strange. No, period. you're not lying. That was very strange, and and these people have my phone number. That's I actually had shit. honored Spike Lee a few months before that um, at Lincoln Center, like in black and white clothes. Listen, man. So he he was it was yeah I, I like this though. And, and that's why I, that's why when I'm I'm I, I look at it differently and, and and we can get we ain't even get to the the crux of the matter right we're just having a conversation because I still have opinions about the other side of it but mm -hmm. I'm a Gemini so that's just who I am I just feel like starting off at right yeah yo who are you guys to, the way they were like canceling you whatever the case may be right mm -hmm. imagine they stood with you Ima imagine if you imagine if you heard me out right like imagine yeah. if you did that I ain't talking about the, the general population. They sure. go, they stay. They gonna move where the majority move. That's they gonna so do. So which that. population are you talking? I'm about? talking about the people you you claim that's friends that claim they there for you that 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 you that they claim love you. Yeah. Like so when you again when you ask me, my perspective is like, yo, I made a mistake. Um, at that point, I don't know. It could have been a bag. It could have been for multiple reasons of why you did it. Right. Mm -hmm. It could have been your reason what you said. Mm -hmm. Could have been what I said. Exactly, and that's and, and, and that's okay. <laughs> and even if I don't agree with that, I have to understand that I gotta. We can agree to disagree, right? Mm -hmm. I think the core of the conversation for me, outside of that though, is do you think? And, and this is like I love. I'm a big Kanye West fan, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I had to look at Kanye West and say this. I think with the slavery is a choice thing. Mm -hmm. I think he was irresponsible. With his platform. That's what I'm now, saying. Now, that could have been the mistake, being irresponsible with your platform, but that's that doesn't take I'm away saying. from your intentions, though. Right, but it does. That's that's the issue, and that's the issue of being high profile, mm. is if you're high profile, you use your platform for what makes sense for the people who support your platform. For sure. That's that's the, but I love, this. you just get, I like, I like rebukes because they, they, they steer you. Imagine if Chrisette forgave herself mm. and stopped holding on to the posture of, damn, I really fucked that up. You know what I'm saying? Um, because I'm like I'm at the crux of about to release new music. Finally, mm. it took me a minute to release music from the heart space. I'm about to, to, to go out on a tour, which is called the soft life circle. Mm. Like the whole idea of softening to who you really are. And I should enter that, that next space of my life without regrets so i think what you might sense is fuck i regret that shit mm. maybe i don't even know how to word it but if that's what it is maybe yeah i mean i'm i'm hearing your energy more than your words and i think that that's what you might sense but and, but just me being understanding right let's go back to i can understand that because like you probably was at like the top of your career i wasn't you wasn't mm -mm. you wasn't. no i've never been more famous than i am now okay that shit blew me up Okay. Well, yeah. People from country. People sure. from countries I have cannot pronounce was calling my actual cell phone. Yeah, I believe. I mean, I. Always, I have more streaming now than I've ever had. Trust me. So when they say like me. negativity sells or whatever it is, it does. <laughs> I was like, 
Guys, I'm not even famous enough to be canceled. No, no, canceled. bro, canceled. no cap. Canceled. No facts. Yeah. Facts. The whole world heard me say that. No shit. caps. Like it's like I feel like in, in I was a, like cancel you lying. Bro, I, this I sing so I sing so I play the piano. Mm. Like who cancels a piano player? Yeah, like I I think <sighs> that was crazy. I just I don't know, that cancel shit. So no, I wasn't at the top. I was just I was just singing. I was just being a singer. Okay, so. Oh, maybe I don't understand what the top is. Maybe that that concept fails me. But I didn't feel like I was special, if that makes sense. Mm. But after I was like, y'all done enough of me to put this much energy into canceling me? I got to go back and recalibrate. I might be a pretty big damn deal. Mm. I promise you. Yeah. I promise you I had never thought of myself as a big deal before that. For real? I mean, I mean you had some pretty Period. big moments though. Like I mean like you got one song that like people play at their weddings or something like that. A like, couple of forevers. Bro, it got like fifty some million views on YouTube now. That's probably a different video. You probably got way more than that. Yeah. You no. ever think you was a big deal? Come on, cut the shit. You ain't, you just, Cause what's a big deal if it's not impactful? Right, like you know how many people's songs you know that you'd be like, who's the artist that sings that? You know what I mean? Like I just never felt like I was making the impact that I wanted to make. I always wanted people's hearts to change, like people to have heart shifts, people to feel me in their soul. You bullshit. I'm dead serious. No, bro. You can make somebody heart change and they don't know your name. It's a song right now called "Birthday Chick," right by Trap Beckham. I know him because I know the guy, right? Mm -hmm. But he changes people's, he create moments for people around the world that probably don't even know him. That's, you need to, you, can you be my motivational coach? What I'm the like, hell? No, I'm not <laughs> trying to motivate you. I'm just being real. Dope. I'm just being you know real. What? Like, I'm just being real. Like, he's, like, he changes people. I can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take communion. God. I just, I just name the father and son and go. Oh, man. I really ain't getting my bag because she said something about Thanksgiving. You talking about you church and God, but whatever. That's another conversation. But but they um, told you you was a preacher. No, 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 no. You heard that before. No, nah. I, I heard people say like you gonna be a preacher when you get a or some shit like that. But no, nah, but back to I feel like okay, it was I can understand what I said, but I, what I was saying was mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you lost a lot, or it felt like you lost a lot in that moment. It felt it, it felt like. I lost a lot to my team. Right. It felt like... I couldn't understand. Guys, we have money in the bank. Right. Like, we can live off of that for a really long time. Right. So Why I are see, we panicking? So, I see how it could be a little regretful. Mm -hmm. Like, I understand. Like, I've lost opportunities that to this day still hurt. What I regretted was losing the people's, like, trust. Mm. That was painful. Because you sing at, you sing to people and their children. You sing at what? Like, you sing to p humans. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when somebody comes to a concert, like they trusting you with their vibe. Mm -hmm. To lose that trust, that that hurt the most. I could, but that's why I say I could see how being, but I could see yeah. how it could be regretful. Like y'all regret yeah. that moment because it came with a lot. Yeah. So I don't want yeah. you to think I'm being insensitive because I do mm -hmm. understand yeah. that feeling. No, the I'm money just... part wasn't. That's that because <clears throat> you can go into a different business. There's many ways. If you if you have the heart of. If you have the power to get wealth, you can get wealth wherever you feel powerful. Facts. Mm. But I, but even a little bit, you might have felt like you lost the, your power there in that moment. Not right mm -hmm. now. I didn't feel like that. Never? No. I felt like that about the music business. I felt like, all right, that's it for music. <laughs> what are we going to do now? Okay. Let's bring this power Reword somewhere else. That. Maybe you felt like you lost the power in the music. Oh, absolutely. But that's a lot when you said you came into the game with a million. We can't ignore that. That's... That you could not saying you did right, but mm -hmm. one could feel like they lost themselves if they lost the power of the music because you just said, "Bro, I walked into the game getting signed for a mill." That wasn't my power. I mm. was powerful, and that's why I made a mill. Mm. The, the, the million didn't make me powerful. So you always felt like, "Well, shit, yes. I just done with music, do something else." Yes, absolutely, but I question. Sheesh. No question. Give me twenty dollars, I'll make whatever you need me to make. I got twenty right now. I could, I could, I could double it. No, I need a little more for more. That was... Soft, the softlifecircle.com. People can invest in that? They can go buy tickets to my tour. Oh, like, right. any moment, ask me to make money, and I will. 
Oh, wow. That's just that's just who we are as people if we trust ourselves. No, I was trying to make a play though, but you, you know, I was trying to like give you some money so you can make me some more money. That's what I was trying to do. But you said you wasn't gonna give it to me. I mean, twenty. I mean, I want a little more than twenty. You feel me? I probably gotta use some more money. What I'm explaining to you is that at I'm joking. Any, you, she's at, serious. I'm joking. Any time, bro. All right, say less. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a couple dollars. I'm gonna ask everybody here for twenty. You gonna give me like. Any time, bro. All right, say less. All right, Dang, now, now see, my ego comes alive when you talk about money. There we go. But not, again, I, I can see how it could be regretful. I, I, I can see that. I understand. And I don't think that's a, I don't, I think that's a fair feeling from it, though. I, I think so, too. I think it's a fair I think feeling. so, too, but I think it's time to get, get rid of it. Right? Like, mm -hmm. I have this whole tattoo philosophy. I'm t I have a lot of tattoos. And the philosophy is no regrets. Mm -hmm. That's what you say when you get every tattoo. So I, I, need, to, I need to apply that to, to life. So coming out, right, getting mm -hmm. ready for this tour, getting doing mu new music and stuff like that. Are you prepared for it not to be as successful as the first time? Y'all keep acting like I was this big, huge, successful artist. I have more dates now than I had when I first got started. Okay. Without a single. Okay. You hear me? Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean that I'm a big deal now. I wasn't that big before. Y'all, y'all made me, y'all, y'all, whoever y'all is, was like, oh, canceled the huge, um, um, huge Celine Dion, Beyonce. Right, you might not person. have been Beyonce, bro. It's, you had like it go from oh. indie artist nobody to Beyonce. It's I things like in the middle. I felt like I felt I felt kind. Of, I had a in, had a song called Indie Girl and Rich Hipster. Like that's who I am. I'm very chill. Bro, who is this chick? She is a clone. You she want to sit up here and say she wasn't a big deal? Bro, you got another song that was one of my favorite songs. Who was it? You can't think, even remember it. What are you talking about? <laughs> what was it? I think it's right into the music. No, that's that that one. Uh, I think it's mm, mm, over me. Your girl. girlfriend. Come on, yeah, that was. You, you did songs with Jay. You did Jay Z. I mean, you did songs with Rick Ross. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you talking about? It wasn't a big deal. I don't, I don't, I don't measure big deal the way everybody else do. Forgive me, forgive me. I don't get it. We in the bag, the spiritual bag. I get it. But that's what I am. Yeah, I ain't mad at that. I'm not mad at that. It's what I am, and I and I'm tired of like trying to make believe. Oh yeah, I really think what somebody else thinks. Mm. I don't. Okay, so again, mm -hmm. outside of. But I love to play you. I mean, I mean, I will throw money at the club, like, but happily. But outside for okay, fun. Outside of spiritual though, mm -hmm. right? In the the aspect of the business, the music, right outside of you, mm -hmm. the music business, mm -hmm. right. When we look at success, right. When we look at the masses of how they perceive you, right. Mm -hmm. The the big songs that you had, mm -hmm. right. The the numbers, the streams that you did, right. Just looking at it from the tangibles, I get you. I right? have been called underrated since the day I came out. I got a number one in the Billboard charts, the pop charts, and they said this was the lowest selling number one record of all time. Okay, but you still had a number one. Right. That's what you would have said. But what they said was, mm. it's the lowest selling number one. And then you got a Grammy too, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. That too. It was like, oh, this uh, this is a this is a type of music we don't really get. Let's make a Grammy for this type of music, alternative R and B. I would call it call. I would call it innovative. innovative. Right. And so I'm not I'm not saying that I haven't done anything, and I'm not saying that I haven't done well. But I'm saying that that's not what drives me to keep going. Right. So yeah, figuratively, right? Mm -hmm. Figuratively. Talk, talking about the the tangibles, right? The things we shouldn't care about that you don't care about. I get it. Mm -hmm. What it do you think that will play with your ego, right? Because you're from New York. Mm -hmm. Would it play with your ego if you came out, mm -hmm. right, and you didn't see at least some of the success that you did see, even though they tried to play it, play play what you did? Would that fuck with you? Would you would you, would you look at it differently? I'm not chasing the same success. Mm. I'm not even going to the same types of venues. I'm not even charging the same type of ticket prices. I'm not even having the same amount of people allowed in the room. I'm not doing the same type of content. Are you doing that because you want to or you feel like you got to? You don't have no choice. I'm doing that because I have to. Like, that's who, it's who I am. Mm. Like, the, the music that I sang before, the R&B music, was music that I learned how to sing. Right, the, the the outfits that I wore before as an army outfits I learned how to wear. I was styled by the great June Ambrose. Mm. Like these were these were these were moments where I was being taught how to be a part of R and B culture. Hip hop comes natural to me. Mm. Right, I can do hip hop any day. That's probably why I have as many features as I do because it just feels home. Um, but so this is 
a tour that is about me feeling at home. The name mm. of the first single actually is going to be called Home. Like, that's what this is about. This is about the heart. And it should, it not should, it can always be about the heart. So if you But sold- the, the stuff that I've been doing lately has been selling more tickets than I've ever sold. Okay, that's what I want to ask. Because, like, if you sold out, right, mm-hmm. and more people were trying to get tickets, you wouldn't get a bigger venue? Or you'd be like, nah, I want it just to be this many Yes, people. I'm a businesswoman. I'm a businesswoman. But I'm also, like, paying attention to my niche. Mm. Right? So I'm paying attention. But, okay, so here's how it works. I have events and things that I do under a branch or umbrella, right? Mm -hmm. And then my agent has events that he books me for and contracts me for. Okay. So the growth that you're talking about to me is about that, how many contracts am I still receiving? Mm -hmm. Am I still able to sell uh, tickets in the venues that I'm booked in? Right. And that's important for business. Right. I'm talking about my gifting. You're talking about my talent. Yeah, I'm talking about the business. Yeah. The tangibles. Like the- yeah. So this tour, the Soft Life Circle Tour, mm-hmm. is not about business. This this tour is about sharing my heart with people. Mm. But the stuff that my agent puts together, like if you see Chrisette Michelle live at, I'll be here in Atlanta on July 22nd outdoors. My whole band is coming, right? We have to sell tickets to that, mm-hmm. right? Because there's, there's people's rent at stake, right? That's... But I'm not putting that show together. I'm just walking onto the stage and performing with my band. Okay. Right? The Soft Life Circle Tour is more of like, I want to share my heart with people. It's a limited amount of seats, you know. And um, if you align with what I say and what I preach and what I talk about, then come through. Mm. Yeah. So success, that's not a thought over there. Success there is, was I brave enough to deliver the message? On the stage, like the the the, the stuff of my agent is like, yo, we gotta go hand. Everybody gotta have matching dunks. Are the horns ready? The sound check, like everything gotta be perfect. So you don't even look at you didn't even pay that really no mind, I guess. Like that's not that's even, performance. Mm. That's performing, right? And I get paid to perform, mm. right? The soft life circle is more like if it's eleven people in the room, I don't care. For real though, no, without question. It's not. It's not a money thing. Okay, no, I believe. You. Yeah, but but yeah. The, on the other side, no, we're not doing shows and not selling tickets on purpose. That's not. A, that's not a thing. Yeah, and I guess that's the question. Like, yeah, and yo, so they keep at, adding dates to that. So stuff. how do you measure? How do you measure where you are now compared to where you were before the whole Trump thing? How do you measure that? I'm in disbelief, cause I thought that it was over. So I went and opened up a yoga studio. I started a a, a boutique. I um, started a coaching business. All of this stuff. I said, let me let me create different streams of income because the music thing is over, bro. I did that, and they kept calling for shows, and I'm like, but I'm canceled. Mm. And I got more calls for shows, but I'm, a record label was like to sign you, but I'm canceled. I couldn't, I couldn't understand how you were canceled and being called at the same time. And finally, I was just like, okay, God, like, clearly you have a plan that I know nothing about. Mm. And that's, that's, that's honest. Like, clearly you're, you're on to something that I'm unclear on. And so I just had to, I had to shut down the boutique. Um, and I had to, I had to shut down parts of the coaching, which I had to hire a team mm. to help me relaunch because I can't even handle the amount of shows that I have now. It's a lot. Talk your shit. I like this. So... Uh, it's you so funny. I like that. But it's true. It's like it's like <laughs> now it's like that part on that side, like before, like the first time. I'm just looking at from the distance, like, is that my name? Mm-hmm. I still that's I'm still in awe of moments like those. That that'll never make sense to me. Mm-hmm. So how are you being more intentional about what you're doing now, right, compared to? before that moment right i'm doing both Mm. so i'm creating a platform for the place where i want to say there's hope right and that's what the soft life circle is about it's like okay i'm gonna okay clearly that was the wrong platform so let me make one Mm. right and then let me bring in whoever aligns with it you know sometimes it's free sometimes it costs but that's my gift at work like you don't have to pay me to do that That i just want to be there but this performance stuff like you got to write a check so do you think we could have a world or, or there ever will be a world where you could have kind of both, like we could have best of both worlds? I don't where, know. But I ask God that all the time. I wish. I don't think so. 
I don't think so. I think that my talent is 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 creating that those R and B moments on stage, and and creating those jazz moments on stage. Mm. I don't even. That's not even my favorite thing in the whole world to do. I'm just pretty good at it. Mm. And so what I do is I just continue to stay great at that. Um, but I wouldn't bring in a yoga meditation in the middle of my show, no. Mm. Mm -mm. Or maybe even like gospel, like you wouldn't. It doesn't resonate the same. In other words, I don't sing gospel. That type of gospel is performance. You know, when there's all of the growling and the riffing and all of that. Like for me, that's performance. The gospel I'm talking about is how's your spirit? Mm. Like how do you bring your spirit with you everywhere you go? That's what I mean when I talk about gospel. Mm. But a lot of times when people say gospel, you're talking about music. I don't. All of the music that I've created that's gospel, I'm putting on at the Soft Life Circle tour mm. with a guitar, like mad, mad vibey, mm. because I, I I can't perform gospel. You know what I'm saying? No, you're right. So yeah, I I can't see how it comes together. I feel like one is work, and one is my offering. How is it now? I guess. It's like you can't even have a conversation without bringing up everything that happened. Like, how is that treating you? Like, is that how are you embracing that? Is it? Is it? Is it like? Yeah, because everybody's been to that place at to some extent in their life. Everybody's been rejected at some point. Everybody's done something that they feel like, dang, did I mess that up? At some point, and so it really becomes a conversation about all of us. You know, that's a fact. You might not have made the same mistake. That's a fact. But you made you you did something. But you know, it's funny. I was talking to to, to uh, Zanique or whatever, uh, mm-hmm. Tia's daughter, Tiny's daughter, and she brought uh, something up that I thought was so dope and something that a lot of us overlook, and that's just the struggle from the celebrity side, mm-hmm. right? Let's look at Ja Morant. Let's look at um, YK Osiris. Not condoning every, anything he did, but let's look at these young guys or young people who's making mistakes, who's famous, Mm -hmm. they're making mistakes in the public. And it's different. Like, I I thank God that I haven't got that level of success at an early age because I made a lot of mistakes. Imagine if I was famous and I had to be in front of so many people, right? So I get you on one side. It's like, yeah, we all made that mistake, but it's a difference, right? And we got to respect that. And I feel like a lot of people don't look at the difference. Like, you and and I are, are, are totally different when it comes to, you can't afford to make a uh, just an everyday mistake like I can because mm-hmm. I'm still building, right? Mm-hmm. And even at this age, the at stage, so many things, whatever, whatever, whatever whoever you think I am, I, I, it's still a different level of when I make a mistake, only a certain margin of people want to see. Yeah. When you make a mistake, oh, it's going to be worldwide, Yeah. right? That's, talk to me about that. Does that ever seem like, I don't know, unfair? Does it ever hurt? Have you ever looked at it like, man, yeah, we all made mistakes, but like, because of who I am, I wasn't able to make certain mistakes like you guys could, like your peers, your friends, your family. I wish I could have made more mistakes in dating, in public. Like in I public? Had, yeah, I had to hide every relationship. And I've had some dope relationships. But I had refused to show people me, like, figuring out love. I just felt like y'all could have the music, right? Because I could just write another song or figure out another job. But you can't have my love life. So like they like that part of being famous or a celebrity have been tough because it's like I can't hold the person who I really want to hold hand. I can't kiss somebody in the club the way I really want to. Um, you know, that's 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 been difficult. And then friendships, like people don't know who I'm friends with. Mm. I'm very private with what I hold close. You like I'm incredibly private with you like uh, a superhero. Like, I don't know. You know, superheroes they they're not really they don't show who they're in love with, so yeah, I'm not the villain can't hurt them. I'm not showing you that. Because I do know that people can hurt my, what I hold dear. Mm-hmm. Because a man can't handle what I went through. You said you got a divorce or something? I got a divorce. Was that because of what was going on? I don't know. You'd have to ask him. What do you think? I don't know. You'd have to ask you, him. You wish you would have made a lot of mistakes in public. I'm giving you the platform to make. Oh, 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 what that's good. Think? That's good. That's good. Not so that mistake or that experience or that situation. I was married. Mm-hmm. So when I say like I wish I could have like played around with love in public, like before I got married, and even now, oh my gosh, like I really like somebody, but I'm never telling anybody about it because I see what they can do. So when you say you wish. 
I don't understand. Because everybody the wants to love not. to like how you got to share your engagement and your pregnant wife on your like on your social media. Mm-hmm. That's so dope. Like you got to see her in tears. You got to see you embrace her. You got to see you say what you like. That's so. I cannot do that. No, you because, choose not to do that. That's correct. And because the person who is involved on the other side, that's way too much pressure. Like I can handle the pressure of ridicule. Mm-hmm. But I would never ask a man to be like, oh, yeah, come be on my Instagram and let's show them us on vacation. I just wouldn't. I understand. Mm-hmm. I understand. Um, yeah. So that's the hard part about, like, celebrity is, like, you, y'all think y'all see my personal life, but you don't. And I want to show it to you, but I don't know if you're going to be nice. Mm. And I can't control you. Yeah, that's So nice. all I get to do is give. Whatever it is I'm supposed to give, that's what I get to do is, is give. I don't get to, like, share. And giving and sharing is not the same thing. Mm. Right? Because sharing, we got to both be involved. Mm. That's crazy. I'm not, like, a therapist or nothing like that. Mm-hmm. But I can only imagine how that how that reflects in your everyday life. Like, right? Outside of, like, Christian myself, right? With the mm-hmm. music, right? But just you as a person. But, like, yeah, that's tough. That's I can't hard. Imagine. Because the moment, I guess now every mis- for you, every mistake you make is going to be put through a micro microscope. Right? It would have been before. But even but now I'm looking at it like you, right? So now unintentionally you kind of again I don't know. I'm just this is a perspective I would think I would mm-hmm. think mm-hmm. now, right? You say I'm and I'm unable to share. Mm-hmm. Right? I have to. I've give, always said that. Yeah, I have to give the world my gift. Mm-hmm. I can't share with the world because. Right, Mm-mm. but now not th- even in my songs. This tour will be the first time where I share a bunch of music that's about me. Mm. I don't even write about myself. But now I'm thinking about what about what are those times where you have conflicts in those relationships, right, or with friends, and you feel like it's an unfair exchange when you feel like this is the one place I am supposed to share because I can't share my everyday life. When you when you might overlook someone's mistake or uh, the humane per- part in somebody because they always going to make a mistake. Does it trigger you? What does it hit? Does it cut a little deeper? Because it's like, man, I know I can't share it to the world. You're the person, a friend. Uh, it could be a best friend, a platonic friend. It could be uh, um, a spouse, right? Mm-hmm. When you don't feel like you can share with them, have you caught yourself kind of like yeah. overreacting? Yeah, definitely. I, like as soon as you said that, I was like, damn, I gotta. Yeah. So the guy that I really love right now, like he has so much capacity for my ideas and thoughts. Mm. Like he's strange. And, but he's also a businessman, and he has multiple businesses, and he's on display in the business space. So he kind of gets it like everybody can see him too. So that that confiding in each other is a very big deal for both of us. Mm. Yeah, that's a great question. But are you working on that, though? Because it's easy to, like— Well, I have two therapists. <laughs> mm. And I got elders. My auntie gets a call from me. She's 67. She gets a call from me every other day. Mm. I speak to I speak to my grown folks because I know that I carry a lot. I'm not and I don't I don't like to make believe that I don't carry a lot. Mm. Like you may not know that just saying hello, but I know that. So I give myself the the gift of of talking to people who care about me. Mm. Yeah, and they're usually much older than me. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah it's, it's it's like even if you said it like man I'm not able to share with the world. It's like, damn, like that has to hurt, right? Like you, you. It's ha- it's just strange, cause I look at other people's like feeds and I'm like, you, you telling these people what? Are you showing them what? And I know, like, I'm not doing that. So, again, playing devil's advocate. No, I'm not. I'm just being me. Being honest, right? Mm-hmm. What if? What if? That's why so much criticism came because you shared right how you, you read the room wrong. Basically, like you was you went on the Trump thing. You wanted to uh, share with them the spirit, right? You wanted to sing gospel, and, and but they never saw you like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at it like, well, maybe that could be. I don't know. Again, I don't I have no. No, I'm that is no. the reason. What if, but what if that was the lesson though, not the reason? What if you did share? that part with the world wouldn't it be a little easier for us to accept that because we already know you now yeah and so that's that's what this is that's what this next like you know how you go through seasons and you say okay this is what i'm gonna do different this time this time it's about intentional sharing Mm. it's like for me i know i'm not gonna share on no big stage like i know i'm not doing that 
But so I said, you know, I do want to share, but I'm going to share in smaller stages, places mm. where I can feel safe. I'm going to go to podcasts, and I'm going I'm to sit with minds that I think align with some parts of me, and I'm going to share there. Like, this is an intentional moment. Okay. Do you know what I mean? So now it's about how do I share? Like, how do I share that feels right for me? Mm. It feels safe for me. Um, and I'm like, I have, like, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say I have social anxiety, but, like, a, lo a lot of people, it's like, mm. I go into performance mode immediately. Five, six, seven, eight. Dun, 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 okay. You know what I mean? But when it's like small and chill, I can like vibe. Mm. You know? I, you say you you wish you would have made like public mistakes with your relationships. Do you think that um, that's something that you think about on a day to day right now? Because you're such in love with somebody, right? You in love. With yeah, somebody, because like, I, because then people might know like, oh, she just crazy as me. Mm. You know, like people be like, oh, she, you know, she dated someone. So, so when right? you gonna try? When you want to try to be public so you can get to the next step to start making mistakes? This is the beginning. Like this podcast, I did a podcast early today. I got like podcast lined up for the next couple of weeks. This is the beginning of, this is the beginning of, you're at the beginning of my new journey. Mm. And it started today with you telling me to have no more regrets. Mm. Like this is a, I, I say that I went through a healing journey and now I'm at the show up journey. Mm. This is the start. So we'll see where it goes. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. I want to ask you something. I was curious when you like being a Christian. Mm -hmm. Are you talk about God all the time? And I was wondering, like, what does being a Christian mean to you? Like, it means holding space for people, mm. right? Like being available to people, like hearing people when they talk, and responding in a way that's helpful. Finding the help in you, right? And then it also means like knowing knowing your limitations. It means being present. That's what Christianity means to me because it's about like knowing who God made you to be mm. and just being that all the time. And every single time you kind of forget, just tapping back in. You know what I mean? And then and then being brave enough to be available. Mm. Whatever it is that he made you to be like just can you be available to that? Like my 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 hope for what I can contribute is is peace. Like, that's what I hope to contribute is, like, you can have peace, right? Yeah, I know that happened, but let me show you how to have peace. Mm. Like, that's that's a goal. So everywhere I go, like, I'm cognizant of that, no matter what's going on in the room, mm. you know? And then when I know that I can't, I can't offer that, which is something that I learned, right? When I know that I can't offer that, I just think this is not the room for me. Mm. And I'm okay with that. That you can't offer peace? Yeah, sometimes you can offer peace. Sometimes people are not aligned with that idea. Sometimes that doesn't resonate with people, and that's okay too. You know what I mean? If you walk in a room and niggas is shooting each other in the face, <laughs> this might not be the place <laughs> nah, facts. Yeah, for me yeah. to say, let's all meditate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, facts. Like, you know what I'm, I'm saying? Like, y'all think. <laughs> I'm going to go. <laughs> yeah, I see y'all when I'm there. <laughs> when you make it, whoever make it, you can talk. Yeah, right, I'll I'll see, or I'll see you at the hospital. Mm. Right? Sometimes you go to, I'll see you at jail. Mm. There's a lot of availability. People are very available to peace at jail. What does peace got to do with Christianity? How do you how, how do we talk? You say well, that's I've, what me, mm -hmm. what, what Christianity means to you. But like so peace, the concept of peace that I originally fell in love with in that way was in the in the the Buddhist space, right? It was about being okay with your load, mm. being okay with what you have to carry through this life. It's this idea of, of suffering contently. Mm. And then when I looked at, like, the story of Jesus, I was like, bro, he's definitely Buddhist. Like, <laughs> What part? What story? Just in general, but especially carrying the cross. Mm. Like, especially um, the mockery of a good person. There's this one story where, you know, he finished praying and he comes back down the mountain and there's these, this group of men that are going to bring him to his death. They're like, all right, it's time to go carry a cross. And one of his bros is like, nah, F that nigga. We slicing this nigga ear off. And he pulls out his sword and he slices off one of the enemy's ears. Mm. And Jesus lifts up his hand and puts it on his ear, heals the ear, and says, no, this is what I must do. Like, that's peace. Mm. knowing who you are and knowing what isn't isn't necessary like what kind of noise is not necessary here mm. i know you wanted to de defend me i know you want to make sure i'm good but right now I, I i know my story in this moment let me just be here mm. and he would just exist in very difficult moments and not try to change and shift things for him to 
to be okay. He just knew who he was and what he was here for. I just want to know who I am and what I'm here for, and I just want to stand in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Jesus was a great example of that. Mm. Yeah. Jesus must have been Buddhist is crazy, though. That's wild. You got some Buddhist friends? No, I'm just saying the fact that you said Jesus had to be Buddhist is just crazy. Not allowed to say that. I don't know. I'm just saying, like, we, you can say whatever fuck you want. I'm just yeah. saying, Jesus is my nigga no, all the time. I, you know, so. I got, um, I got my, uh, a certificate in yoga, and my yogi, he told me that he was at the Himalayas, and he stood upside down in snow for hours and meditated. Like He stood upside down? Upside down. And he didn't snow. die? Nope. He can control his body temperature, like all this kind of stuff. The point being is like his 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 intention was to be so present with himself that nothing on the outside bothered him. It's a little crazy. Yeah. I wouldn't do it. Yeah, I mean, I, would, I don't even know because this such thing as physics too. And there was a preacher who tried to like starve himself for forty days because he thought he was Jesus and he has died. So I mean, unbelievable. I mean, it's, it's like, Unfreaking believable. So yeah, but the little shit that I have to get through, I'm content. I'm straight. I have peace. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So let me ask you this: Do you think that makes because your mindset has changed and shift, right? Mm -hmm. Shifted. Do you think that makes the music better? What do you think that does for the music? Because a lot of times, what is good for us to hear, we don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. Do you think? How does that affect the music? It affects it greatly, and I feel bad for anybody who wants me to make another album that was like another album, like. Hope also said, if you know, if you want to make another, what did he say? He said, People saying they made hole. Well, made hole say, make another hole. Make another hole. Mm -hmm. Like, just, I'm you, I know all this, well, it. just because you asked, <laughs> asked me to repeat myself doesn't mean I have to. You go and repeat me. Mm. You know, so with love, my thought is like, I hope you like it. Mm. But also, there's some. Um, so now we live in a world where you can market different types of music to different types of people. So I have another wedding song coming out that, just like some other music that I've done, is not about me, um, and it's just gonna be marketed to the people who want the next a couple of forevers or whatever. But as far as the soft life circle stuff goes, um, the music is quite different. Mm. It's I guess you could call it Christian contemporary music. That's the sound, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you have to categorize it, uh, to me, a singer songwriter. What 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 um what genre is it going to fall under? I'm just curious. Christian contemporary. It's so one. CCM is the term, and a lot of people be like, "What what CCM exactly?" Right? I mean, honestly, you might have a little head start though. We're just talking about the business because mm -hmm. now I'm pretty. I, I don't know if I know any Christian contemporary artists, but with the name, with the good music, you fuck around, could just hit to yeah, the top it's of the very chart. yeah. It, it's, it's I think I think I think we're, I think That's I me think just who, on I'm gonna send it to you. And you can tell me what you think, but um, yeah, we got some like um, it's very cozy, very alternative rock, just very like you know that mix of like hip hop and alternative rock, where it's just like lo-fi vibes. So let me ask you this: Is this just do you? F oh, of course, you you wouldn't know, mm -hmm. but we've seen let's say Mace, right? Mm -hmm. We've seen Mace. No, this is not that. Like come out of his bag, then get into like the the, the preacher bag, then no, come right back in. That. So no. it's not just because I don't want to <laughs> preach. I, I'm I'm not trying to preach. I'm just trying to share peace with people, like mm. Omarion, right? Or like India Ari, or like Gary O'Bernstein, or you know what I mean? It's, I'm not trying to change anybody's religion. Mm. I'm just trying to introduce you to an idea that you can have peace. Mm. I'm not here to scare nobody or convert anybody. You, you dropped some of the stuff yet already? No. Mm -mm. Well, so I'm, I'm curious, like, you still a person, you still got ego, you still hear me, like, what if like you and this ego? I got ego shit. I'm just okay with being a human. Like I'm, I'm completely okay. I with am too, but my ego lies in a different area. Like my, you know, my ego lies in pleasing, what? pleasing somebody who loves me. Okay, so you like that's why submissive. I protect it so much. You like submissive. I, you, 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 you. Somebody would say that. Like if somebody loved me, they would be like, oh yeah, she's very, she's very submissive. She would go to the ends of the earth for me. Okay. I don't really admit this kind of stuff in public, but yeah. For real? Yeah. I'm learning about you now. Yeah, I don't care about the other stuff. So what's your take on this whole 50 50 thing people been talking about? Then? I'm just curious. Since you're so simple. In love? I yeah, guess in the household. What's the conversation? 50-50? It's just 50-50. I don't know. That's a lot. That's a lot of percentage to what? lay on me. Ooh, what you mean? First of Even all. Even in the household. I think it's the house. We talking about rent, 50-50. What you think about that? 
every God that I've that I've loved, okay, the gods that I haven't loved and have just walked into my life, we've dated for a little while, they had a 50-50 concept. I think that most men desire to take care of somebody. For sure. Whether they can or not is different. But I think they have a desire to. Man, what so do you I think honor, about it? Right, so I honor the desire, right? And then I rock with you until you get to your desires. So you may not be able to really take care of me the way you want to yet. I'll stick around and, and we'll work together until you get there. You got away with words, bro. Like oh, you, man. Like, like, you good. Like, hmm. like you could tell you came up in a, like the old school era where they had, you, you probably did like media training and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Because you got away with words. I come from a family of speakers and preachers. You see how she put it together? Like, I know every man he desires said, to, to, to take care of how she put it together. This is my gift. My gift is teaching. So basically, you cool with 50-50, but yeah, just I'm for saying. a second. Just for a second, though. Get your shit together. Until you get your yeah, shit together. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly like that. That was a better way of putting it. I like that. That was the hip-hop version. Yeah, that was just the... So what was mine? Like the, the Buddhist version? Nah, yeah. It was like, you know, you got different <laughs> levels. Like, people ain't right there yet. You was the movie Anna, I think, I guess, something like that. But like, as soon as she, like, unlocked every part of her brain, she exploded or something. Like, you, like, close to, like, like there. You feel me? Like... I'm still like red pill, blue pill type shit. You feel me? Like I'm just. Oh, that's funny. I'm just. You, you know here? what? I ain't get there yet. You, you talking me? about then get your shit together? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm just saying like. I'm not gonna say that to no man. Get your shit together. Sometimes you got to. Look, get your shit together. Sometimes you got to. Did you like the way that felt? If you come to me, mm-hmm. as my woman, mm-hmm. right, and in a space where I'm ready, if you come to me in a in a safe space. I would accept that. In a safe space. Yeah. If you, if you co- who, who creates this safe space? Did you we go, do. Did you go home and clean up the house and burn candles and say, babe, come in here. Let's, there's safety in here. Now tell me to get my shit together. No, nah, it's it. We do. Like, if I got something to say about my girl, I ask her, like, yo, how you feeling right now? You feel me? Are you okay with hearing criticism? You might not be. You might have been going through so much shit. You feel me? Mm-hmm. I don't do this all the time, but these are things that I've learned from her. Just being, just being honest. Sometimes I got to ask, like, yo, can I, are you... Do you have a capacity right now to have a hard conversation? Mm-hmm. She might say no. Cool, we can wait. Just let me know when you can, right? If you say yeah, then I I think I did my job as creating a safe space. Now, if you tell mm-hmm. now if you lie, that's beautiful, right? If you lie just because you're curious to what I got to say, that's on you again. Mm-hmm. I can't. I can't. I don't have nothing to do with you. <laughs> you gotta do that. I, I can only do what I can do with, with, with the right. With, you feel me? That's good. So if you say yes and you really mean that, then we can have that conversation. And say hey, but I think honestly. And I might not say that to her because mm-hmm. I don't think she would respond. But you could say that to me is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. If we got a safe space, you ask me and we like, cool. But I really think I love you. And again, this present moment don't got nothing to do with nothing else. You've been a great boyfriend, a great this, a great that, a great this. But this, mm-hmm. we got some, we got some, 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 you got some things you can work on in this area. Yeah. The guy, the guy that I like right now, I might say, hey, babe, what do you think about this? I won't, I won't come out the gate and say, get your shit together. Hey, babe, what you think about what? Hey, babe, what you think about, like, getting well, another gonna... job so you can um, take care right, of Right, 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 right. Oh, hey, babe, what do you think about opening up a coffee shop over there by so-and-so? And let's go take a look at it tomorrow. What you think? And he might say, oh, I know my man's in them because so-and-so, you know, because I'm saying, you know what I mean? And I'm like, okay, look, so so tomorrow? You know what I mean? Like, But if just... he don't have it, he can't get that. What you going, you going, front, you going front the money or something? Now you, you putting so, him in a position so, to take care of Okay, so usually if, if a female presents an idea to her man, she's thinking about what he has. It, it might be potential, right? It might be a skill set or it might be money in the bank. Again, she's thinking I, about what he has. I think you like, you got to come down here for us, bro. Like you like getting, you know, first male out of the gate. You All right, so, I'm, so hold, on, let me, hold on, let me hip, the, hip hop that. Yeah. I'm not asking you to do no shit I don't think you could do. Okay. That's better. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Like, let's give me like 15 minutes of that. You're going to be a preacher. 15 minutes of that. Like, we got to come down to my people. You feel me? If I don't think you could do that shit, I'm not going to ask you to do it. So, if if, if you were the man, right, mm-hmm. and y'all going 50 50, like you said, I, 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 I accept the 50 50 until he can take care of everything, right? Mm-hmm. So, if you see a man should take his, uh, get his shit together, right? I'm not thinking you about to come to him with a, a business proposal because the nigga don't even got it to pay the rent, let alone. Oh, wait. Come on now. You didn't say he couldn't pay the rent. I need you to be able to pay your rent. No, I'm saying 50-50. Now, if we got to go 50-50, then I don't got it to. First of all, I probably wouldn't live with you before I'm married. Mm. 
right? Okay. So you, you, in order to be with me, you're going to have to be able to take care of yourself because by the time we living together, there's got to be a ring on my okay. finger. Okay. What yeah. about the notion of sometimes it might be, just in this 50-50 conversation, mm -hmm. the notion of sometimes it might be 80-20. Sometimes it might, sometimes I might have to. 80-20 is too much unless something drastic happened and you lost everything. 80-20 mm. is way too much. I'm not carrying 80% of the relationship. Mm. That's crazy. Unless, like, you know, something happened drastic. Mm. But, like, say we all rated together and something happened. Like, that I can understand because I've seen my father have cancer. My mother, you know, or I've seen my mother have a stroke and my father, you know, ca carry the load. But um, I don't think I would walk into a relationship and sit in it and I have to carry 80%. That's a mm. lot. That's a lot. What do you think you went wrong the most in your previous relationships up until now? In previous ones? I just be moving around a lot. Let me say that in hip hop. I be out here in these motherfucking streets, my nigga. So you be outside? I be out the fuck side. That's probably why you didn't want to share who you was <laughs> with, though, because you was outside. Oh, I was outside. I fell in love with a lot of outsiders. Right, mm -hmm. but um, I was definitely outside. So you want to still be in the streets for real? Now? No, not now. We're yeah, no, time. that's why I say I wish I would have shared it because it was so fun. Mm. It was like a reality TV show worthy. I had a blast, a freaking blast. Mm. R and B style. You can you can do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> had a blast because you should. I'm never judging nobody who has a good time as long as you're safe. As long as you're safe. I don't matter that. I, I it's, honestly, it's hard for me to have these conversations because I really don't care. Mm -hmm. Like people, like people that be mad, like at like Lori Harvey and like uh, I don't know, people like that. Like I just don't care. Mm -hmm. I, well, now what I will say is, I, I do think that you should just. I don't say you should. I should think you should think about. Being more cognizant or uh, the just, feelings of the person you with, not even the feelings, just of like like you, right? Like how could this little less unless you don't care? Oh, I didn't have feelings. Mm. I just got feelings after the inauguration. That shit makes oh shit, I can be sad. Whoa, mm. I had to go to therapy for this. I cried for the first time in years, <laughs> mm. and I remember being in the therapist's office like, oh my god, I think I'm I think I'm a cry. <laughs> I think I think I'm gonna cry, mm. and she was like, "You're crying for sad." She was like, "What do you feel?" And I was like, "I think I feel sad," mm. and I'll never forget like feeling because when you're not sharing anything with people, but you're around people all the time, you're always on a tall bus, you're always on a plane. You learn not to allow yourself to feel too much around people, otherwise you might say something. Mm. You might give yourself away. So yeah, I wasn't out here feeling. So are you are you giving yourself away in a relationship now? Yeah, I think so. Mm. I think so. What's the biggest difference from now in your relationship than then? Besides being outside, I guess. I was just having fun. I I wasn't even thinking about it being serious. Like that wasn't even on my mind. Even in your marriage? No, not in my marriage. My marriage, I had just had a talk with, with uh Kirk Franklin. I had went to the studio to hang out with him and his singers. You said recently? Before I got married. Right before I got married. This was this has all happened within the last five years. Okay. This is this so, you wanted um, to have a conversation with Kirk Franklin before you got married. Well, I didn't know that's what the conversation was going to be about. You, I'm not sure I'm yeah, but he was like, he was, was like, he was like, you know what, you you need. Oh, he was like, you need to. He was like, you need to be okay with needing to be protected. Mm. You need to be cared for. Need to be like seen and heard and, and and understood. And I went home and got married seven days later. Mm. Like it was that fast. We got married in Vegas. So the difference between. You said what's the difference between then now then and now is one i'm not forcing nobody to take care of me or protect me right um i'm protecting and taking care of myself and i and i believe that the part of me that's uncovered is covered by god mm. like until until further notice period hopefully we can see him on the ground one day god no you you my boo yeah maybe Oh, you selling a gram? Yeah, maybe. Hopefully, yeah. That's probably unlocking a whole nother level. I told you, you already up here. I think once I get through this journey of opening up and showing up for myself, then I'll be able to, like, create space for somebody else to share that space. You ain't had to say that in a nigga way for me to understand. 
Okay. In a hip hop way for me, you know what I'm saying? That's Ooh. real. Yeah. That's super real. I gotta feel safe first. Mm. So like as soon as say like after this day I'm gonna call and be like, Babe, you're not gonna believe this. I did two interviews today. Mm. He's gonna be like, Word what you say. Right? And we'll we'll hang out and talk about that and we'll be proud of each other. And as I get as I strengthen my interview muscle, right, then maybe one day he'll be hanging out with me, you know, in the interview room. Mm. But I gotta feel safe first. Mm. Yeah. So do you think that's the biggest you didn't really feel safe then? You just was fortunate, I guess. I was having a blast. What part of having a blast don't you? How do I say having a blast? No, I understand having fun. You was outside. Oh. You said it right. You said it right. <laughs> okay. Like driving a really fast car. Like having a. Bro, you was in the Aston Martin. It's okay. A Porsche 911. But I was having a really good time. <laughs> okay. All I right. want a Bentley Azure. Okay. I get it. I fuck with it. Bentley Azure. So we got the tour um, come in. You haven't shared the music yet. No. When is when are you gonna share this? ASAP. Yeah, so that's the next part out is is sharing the music. Um I wanna share it on the tour before anybody else hears it. I mm -hmm. think that this particular fan base rocks with me enough to where they're just like, We're down. Mm -hmm. Like we're here to listen, we're here to hear. So yeah. you're gonna do the tour first? I'm gonna do the tour first and release then... the music on tour. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. So you'll hear the music I would say September is when you'll actually start to hear it. Okay. Yeah. What else we got going on, man? Like, that's it. I'm always on the it? road. You can go to ChrisetteMichelle'sWorld.com or um, just hang out on my Instagram because my link tree always has my dates. I'll be back here in Atlanta in July. Mm -hmm. um, then again, August 5th and 6th for the actual Soft Life tour. Uh, July 22nd for an outdoor show. Um, Yo, can you follow me back on the gram? I haven't. You know you did. Come on. I thought I did. I watched a bunch of your interviews. I thank you. <laughs> yeah, you can follow me back, man. I don't okay. know what I'm saying. Where you following at? They could do this on, on camera. You know what I'm this, saying? Like, this is hip hop. Is that, why, why do people think people don't want to follow each other on Instagram? I wouldn't. For I don't real? Care about you niggas. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, I just don't care. So, I mean, I just make it awkward. So, if you don't care too, at least you got to do it for now. And then if you unfollow me, then you just look That's like That's terrible. Fuck it. Hey, I'm just being real. Like, oh. I want somebody to unfollow everybody I'm following right now, but whatever. <laughs> no, I appreciate the comment. Um, thank you. Um, appreciate you for coming. Uh, okay. For the people who don't know, if you can um, say the website again. Yes. Uh, one of the tours, the name of the tour, mm -hmm. how to support you, and I'm pretty sure they already know your Instagram, but you can say that too. The Soft Life Circle dot com is the name of the is the website for the tour. Um, it's a soft life circle inner wellness tour. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Chrisette Michelle. That's C H R I S E T T E M I C H E one L E. And then for like shows and stuff, just just click on my link tree on my Instagram and you'll mm. see a drop down of all of my shows. Gang. Yeah, we always outside. Thanks again for real. For real, thank you. I appreciate no. it. This was healing. Anytime. I, I try to make the county some healing. I try. You did a With great a little job. bit of fun. Absolutely. But uh Chrisette Michelle, Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast is a wrap. We out.